Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV7. We have a delightful show that once a week we get one of the county commissioners to join us for something we call Commissioner's Corner. And we talk about topics that they think are important that you understand, not only the individual commissioner's point of view, but what they're trying to do to help the county. Now, I'm delighted to have from the 3rd District today, uh, Commissioner Robert Bucky. Robert, thank you. Hey, Fred. Good. It's the first day of spring, 37 degrees and snow on the ground. And we're getting ready to go build snowmen. Oh, Isn't Lord. Isn't that something? Oh, I can't get it. And first of all, I'd like to publicly thank you. You're the first commissioner to be on second. Oh, great. Second time. Great. So that shows me your commitment to communicating with the public. So I really appreciate it. Absolutely. That. And I know the citizens do. Absolutely. This is extremely important, I think. Well, good. As good. being a county commissioner is communicating with the public as well. well Letting them know what's going on, and it's very important to me. Okay, we've decided to talk about three issues, basically. How about economic development? What's going on? That's a great one. Okay. I love that. As you know, we just hired a new economic development director, uh, Jamie Gilbert. And we hope to have him on soon. Good. I think he should be on soon. Okay. My goal, when I ran through the campaign, and my goal for Queen Anne's County was, one, to fill up all the empty spaces. 22% right. of our commercial buildings are empty in this county. 22%. 22%. Almost that's, a quarter. Almost a quarter. Yeah, and that's ridiculous. That's, that's not just, a good figure. It's, it's not. And you know what? And it's growing. Uh, we just, uh, as you know, I, I think some people are aware about CIS by, by now. Sure. Uh, what is it, 175,000 square foot facility? Yeah. So it, it's just growing and growing and growing. And, and I've given, as the economic development, as the commissioner liaison to economic development, I have given Jamie direction that I want his number one priority to be retention first. Okay. Keep the businesses we have. Keep the businesses we have. Keep them happy. Find a way to help them grow. Let's bring back that relationship that hasn't been here for a very long time. Okay. And it has nothing to do with past commissioners. It just has to do with the environment of Queen Anne's County. You want to be pro-business. You want to be pro, business. I want to be want pro get them here. We want to show them that we're pro-business. Okay. We want to keep them here and show them that we respect them and that we value them. It's very important. Good. Good. Okay. Number two, we need to fill up these facilities. It's 22% you're 22%. talking about empty, yeah. We need to fill them up. It's retail and commercial. Okay, well, re yeah, retail and office space. Right. We need to fill them up. In my personal opinion, before we start building a new infrastructure to support retail and commercial. Does that make sense right. to you? Yeah. Okay. Now, I, let's say a company like... Um, no, let's fill up that 22% of empty stuff that's before right. we start building new stuff. That's right. Does Let, that make sense? Let's, yeah. say Old Bay, let's say Old Bay decides to come here. Right. Obviously, they're not going to be able to fit into a building we have now. We'd right. have to build to... Something for them. Exactly. But... For, for the most case, we're, we, we can fill up our facilities first, and that's what I'm hoping. I, I know for a fact Jamie will be able to do, and my goal is by the end of my four years term that we have 5% empty. You so go quote from 22 me to, to 5, okay. Quote me to that now. That's going to be my goal is to have from 22 to 5%. Yeah, that's a good goal to shoot for. Thank okay. you. And we can replay this in four years, right. and I'm sure you're going to do well. Well, the, as you know, Fred, the important thing with economic development is, is Queen Anne's County is Lapkin. And, and it's, it's a bedroom community. I get that. But when you, when you look at the taxes in the county, look at 2006 budget number. Right. Then look at last year's budget number of 118000 It's almost 50%. Yeah. And there's a reason for it. And, and, and in order to control that, we need to bring in businesses to offset the tax. Well, it makes no sense. My wife's shopping in Dover or Middletown, exactly. Delaware. I, uh, you know, that's, that's making it local. Exactly. Right? The county makes more money on business and piggyback, a commercial business tax, right. than they do real estate tax, okay. as you know. So let's bring that money let's, here. Let's keep, we need, we need to continue to bring that money in and grow that base in order to offset our real estate tax, because if we don't, not this set of commissioners, but another set of commissioners coming down the road are going to have to raise property taxes again from eight point. Who knows? But they're going to. It's going to have to be done to offset the budget. You so only have two ways to raise money in the yeah, county. Okay. It's taxes, business, and real estate. So we've got to get the money. We in. Have, You're suggesting business is the way to go. B businesses is the way to go, and we, we need to do it. And you know what? We're going to start with Wheatlands. Good, I'm hoping okay, okay. Um, that project's going to happen. I, I think the community is going to be extremely happy with what we as county commissioners have accomplished behind the scenes. Um, I, I just really believe that. I, and, and I'm glad that we stepped in, to be honest with you. I Good, really do. Okay. Because now we had a part to play in this. And I say we, I mean you. As a, I, I represent you right, and this gentleman citizen. behind this camera. Of course. You know, we don't, Queenstown commissioners do not represent you in the sense as we do. No. And, and I think it's a good deal for all. And I think Queenstown's happy too. So that's going to be a positive that we've needed to have in this county too. Well, good. I, I think that project is going to show 
where Queen Anne's County has changed. And that, that can encourage more businesses to you. come when they see the success. Yes. That. So economic development is one of your big priorities. Yes. And you're going to be the liaison between the commissioners I am the and liaison. a new appointed head. Well, great. Okay, yes. that's great. Rob, one of the other things you want to talk about or we want to talk about is the comp plan. The commissioners sure. are revisiting. Why don't you remind everybody what we're talking about and okay, sure. what you all are The thinking. comprehensive plan is a is a guideline, is a plan sure. that counties, municipalities throughout the United States, they use as a guideline for structure and growth. Okay? okay. So Queen Anne's County wrote their comp plan, I want to say, in 2009. It was approved by a, several boards. It had high school students on it, teachers. Committees talking. Committees. Citizens talking, uh, a lot of input. Uh, growthers, no growthers, right. whatever you want to call it. They were all putting a bowl together and they created a comp plan. And this comp plan kind of gives a guideline on where development, residential development is, commercial development, you know, where you can right, and right, you can't right. build. I believe in that plan. Okay. I truly do. You're I happy with the current plan. I'm happy with the current plan. I, I'm, there's some question, there's some talk about whether the commissioner should go in and, hey, look, I, that's a slippery slope. I don't want to go down. Okay. I just told you five minutes ago that we need to fill up to 22% of the commercial space, right? right? So why would we go open a comp plan to create more commercial? When we need to fill up about well, we need a quarter to fill up. of the facilities sure. we have. Sure. Yes. And, and you know what? I get there are certain points of certain areas to have development. That's fine. Let's look at them. I have okay. no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to open a comp plan, or let's say the commissioners review the comp plan, along with planning and zoning, and I would insist as a county commissioner right. that we have groups involved in this again. Okay. The same committees maybe different people, personalities change a little bit, the schools, I want people involved in this. You want a lot of input. Yes, like sir, you know, no doubt. And yeah. we do it, we do it one time and we go in and open it up to make, you know, I understand there's some pieces of property here and pieces of property there that just didn't kind of make sense right now. They, they're all on what they call, Mark Anderson calls an island. Okay. They got development all the way around them. It might be one acre sitting here, but they got commercial, residential, but yet this piece of development could be developed. So I recognize that. So a lot of times, you know, it's like a budget. Do you, do you live by a budget each year? You're you, supposed to, but most companies, what they call is may massage the budget. You tweak it, look at yeah, it. Tweak it yeah, tweak it. You look sure. at it, you massage it, and you work it. And, and I think that's what we should be doing at some point. With the comp plan. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. But I, I'm not one to go on there and just open it up for just creativity. I just don't believe in that. Okay. I, I think we have plenty of growth potential right now. We just, we just need to relax and let this new guy take his position, let, the, let this set of county commissioners show these citizens that we really do care. And you think the growth is going to come when you start uh, filling some of those 22% of those buildings that are unoccupied? Absolutely, Great. Fred. Plus okay. the Wheatlands. Plus, Fred, there's other properties out there or potential development right now. So there's a lot of area to grow, isn't Yes, there? sir. Sure. You got Lowry Farm. You, you have some redevelopment happening in the Kenton Arrows right now. You have Jody Schultz getting ready to do a restaurant, I'm sorry, a hotel slash a convention center for the Kenton Arrows. This is going to be a great attraction, It's going to be fantastic. Right? Yeah, it's this a great tourist spot already, right? Just imagine if it gets bigger and better. Tremendous. You know what? <clears throat> My goal, and I, I tell people this all the time, business owners at the Kenton Arrows, I want to see Robert Bucky. I, I would love to see Kenton Arrows to next St. Michael's. Oh, great. And we can make it happen. Of course we can. We can. Wh why? All that traffic's passing by it every weekend to go to Ocean City. We can't get siphoned a little off. Why, why, what, what, we have the number one restaurant in the United States of America in Queen Anne's County. You know which one that is, which right? Which one is it? Cracker Barrel. Is it really? Oh. You didn't know that. Oh, the number. Oh, yes, well, the number okay. on Cracker yes, Barrel. Okay. okay, right. There's a reason for that. Okay? It's not locals going there no it's tourists it's, it's people passing people coming through. across that that's bridge. right well do you consider our restaurant tourism i do yeah i do too yeah, sure so we need to have a variety now there's going to be some people out there that don't like it when i say this and this goes with economic development sure. we as citizens deserve to have variety of course we okay do. i enjoy going out to outback steakhouse and tgi fridays other citizens enjoy the same we need them in Queen Anne's County. We need County. that variety here. We need that variety. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with the restaurants we have. They're great. They're fantastic. But we need the variety. So one of the things that I want to do in the near future, and again, this is probably a, a, a stab to my heart now from some people, <laughs> is that we need to change the liquor law, okay. the liquor license law. You, Fred, couldn't buy a TGI Fridays, a franchise, and bring it to Queen Anne's County. Because of the liquor laws. Because of you have okay. to be, um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you could, but TGI's couldn't because okay. you have to own 
the business, the liquor license, you need to live in Queen Anne's County right now. Yeah. So we need, uh, I believe it's, uh, uh, the legislation has to give us a, uh, a waiver to be able to do that. So you can adjust it a little bit and attract yes, these businesses we're talking about. I'm all for the Outback State. Did you also know this? There's 23 counties and one municipality, the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. Guess how many of them counties don't have a chain restaurant like I'm referring to? I'm afraid to say none, but you tell Thank me. Thank you, yeah. none. Okay. Queen right. Anne's County. Okay. No, Queen Anne's County is the only county. The only one. We are the only and county. And here we are, the gateway to the ocean, isn't with a million something? people passing isn't us every something? weekend. That isn't that sense? something? We, yeah. It just blows my mind that, uh, you know, we need to have that variety. And I personally think, and I would love, as a matter of fact, I have a 2 o'clock appointment today with the, uh, Commissioner Anderson and the Waterman family to talk about Wheatlands. Good. And okay. I would love to see, I mean, them try to ask a restaurant franchise get, a nice, get an get out back there. or get something yeah, yeah. there why not what's wrong with that well the way 301 has been 301 is not a little sleepy road anymore of right not. And we can get to it right off of 50 of there. yeah it's tourism good. you know when i go travel somewhere if if we're not going if if we're not going to ocean city and we're traveling there's two things that i look at when i travel hotel accommodation and where you can eat and where i can eat <laughs> you and me both okay so sure. that that answers that question okay good okay great job okay Thanks. now let's switch locations sure. you've asked uh, verizon to look at and tell the commissioners about the tower locations the idea making it so they'll be wireless for all citizens we can catch up with the western oh, shore tell me what this that is, is a great okay so yeah. listen the queen anne's county i want to say and i could be wrong so don't 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 quote me on sure. this but you you might know the answer too i want to say 30% of it is wireless, internet, well, internet. It's inter too internet. big, whatever the percentage okay. is, isn't it? It's too yeah. big. Yeah, exactly. It's too small, you mean. In other words, yes. I, I want to see at least 95% of the county become internet accessible. Great. Whether it will be wireless. Have a lot of people smiling out oh, there. It when needs you say to that. be. Come on, yeah. this is Queen Anne's County. Right. You know, you, we are. We you know we're right there in the Baltimore DC area. We're just across the Bay Bridge. Yeah, we're four miles. Four Do miles. you know how many federal and state and and yeah. corporate workers live over here? And well, live I, I hear people, Robert, say not only individual citizens but businesses and people saying it's too slow. Everything's too slow. There's Correct. no excuse for Correct. that. Correct. So if we can find a way to make everyone have wireless, sit at their home and do their work. They no longer have to spend all that money to cross that Bay Bridge and, and gas, and the traffic time and, and traffic. Sure. We can now bring that money back into the county. It stays in the county. It's, it's, it's an economic benefit sure. for Queen Anne's County we to do. We all win. We all we win. All, it's a win-win situation. We'll bring in businesses. The reason for this is that uh, Verizon has a monopoly in Queen Anne's County, okay. as you know. Sure. Their only competition is Atlantic, Atlantic Broadband. Broadband. Well, I'm not going to get into Atlantic Broadband yeah. with you, but Verizon is not a bad company. But they need to step it up, in my personal opinion. Help Queen Anne's County out yes, a little sir. bit. Okay. Yes, sir. The more towers that you have out throughout Queen Anne's County, and this is what was described to me by a Verizon representative yesterday with Jim Moran at an Upper Regional Shore Council meeting. So the average tower that's 200 foot tall has a five mile radius. Okay. Okay. So think of this as a tower. And think of this as... Let's use Ken Island. So if you live within five miles of it, you can get the benefit from Correct. that tower. Okay. But the more towers you have close to that, the stronger the strength. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Sure. And the more broad it goes. Right. So Verizon's not doing that. And we it's need a, more towers. We need more towers. And it's okay. a cost factor, and I get that. Verizon's not going to put a tower out that cost a couple million dollars for Southersville that has less than 500 yeah. citizens. Unless they can make money. Unless they can make it. money. Right. And that's unfair. I'm sorry. I disagree. So what Commissioner... Uh, Moran and I have talked about with Verizon yesterday is we want to see their tower locations. One. Two, if the Queen Anne's County government can help with the infrastructure, help we will. We help will. we will help. Okay. Let's help. Let's let's help make our citizens Because that helps the citizens and the businesses. Correct. Right. Because it's an economic benefit. It helps the schools, it well, helps everybody. It helps everyone. And overall it's going to be an economic benefit for the county. If the county was to spend a quarter million dollars to half a million dollars to help with the infrastructure, we're going to make that tenfold. It's a good investment. It's a fantastic it's a good investment. now. If they don't, there's a um I, you know Fred, I'm not sure the name of the, uh, the company. We said it again yesterday. I took a tour a couple of weeks ago up in uh, Cambridge. Cambridge, Maryland. C um, Cumberland. Oh, I'm Cumberland. sorry, Cumberland. Cumberland. And they have what they call in Allegheny County. Okay. Uh, it's called White Airspace. All right. And I forget the name of the company. We talked about it yesterday. But apparently they work on 750 megahertz. And I'm not familiar with all that we'll lingo. We'll let the science, IT will, guys figure yeah. that out. Okay. So what they're doing up there works. And 95% of Garrett County 
is internet accessible? 95 percent. Because they have these towers that are the size of um, uh, small towers. That little blue thing sitting there. I don't okay. know what this blue thing is, but they're okay. little they're little teeny yeah. towers, and All they right. go into silos of the farmers' homes. You just put it right on top of the silo. Right on top, and and they work out deals with the farmers where they get free internet. They put the tower there, and the more towers they have, they the create this the bubble. Power. The stronger the power. Yeah. Now you buy into it. You know, it might be thirty dollars a month, it's okay. but that's how the company's making its money. And I think that I think the original investment was close to a half a million dollars for the county to do this. But it was money well spent. But it was money, money yeah, well spent. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I saw a study that before they did this, it was like forty-five percent of their citizens were traveling to out of the county to work. Forty-five percent. Now that dropped twenty percent. Mm. 20% just by putting in that cert because now people don't have to drive to their satellite offices they can or work DC. Right at home. They can work right at home and they get the piggyback tax in that area because, as you know, you, the tax is where you live. So if you work for uh, ABMB Termite and Pest Control, which is, by the way, my company, company. and thanks for letting me put it out there. <laughs> a good plug. Okay? It's all right. So, and uh, my office is in DC, and you're a sales representative for right. me, and I'm forced you to come in. Let's, okay, every day or whatever. So you can do this from home? You, you can do this now from home. So your piggyback tax will no longer be based in DC, it will be based where you live. And I can just see Route 8, where a lot of people know the traffic. Wouldn't it be nice if we cut back 20% of that traffic, Lord. Oh, you, you, you saw yeah. that during the campaign. <laughs> we all did. It right? was a train. Yes. It was literally a train of cars. And, I, and that's, hey, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's another reason why I cannot support this sewer project. Okay. I know we, every time that comes up, I talk about that. Can you imagine 10 years from now on Route 8? Oh. If this project goes through and you have 600 homes built, and Lord knows what kind of commercial development this is going to open up, we're being sued by an individual down there that owns almost 200 lots. I can't imagine them individuals living down there at seven o'clock in the morning that train that you know i used to well, see six to eight in the morning is a busy busy it's, road it's going it to be horrible it's yeah. just it's just that's another thing is my problem is the infrastructure okay the if there was another way out that would be different obviously but there isn't there's I still, one way in and one way, way out. i still think the right. solution to that problem down there is what they call the the the, the comfort system okay where, where everybody, we call and i it, have a feeling we're going to talk about that's this right every time okay. we get together i know I, okay. that's good I will well pass i think that's Thank great you. with you guys meeting with verizon and talking about that let's end uh, up with, can i say something else of course you can. real quick sure. if, if, if verizon tells us no because of proprietary information right. we can force them to with a resolution okay so i'm letting you know now there's some alternatives i have asked our county administrator today to send Verizon a letter requesting this information. And if they tell us it's proprietary, then I'm going to make a resolution to force them to do it. Make them do it. I'm going to make them do it, okay. just like Montgomery County and PG County All do. Right. Because if they do business in that county, you can force them to do that via resolution. And I'm only doing this to help the citizens out. I well, I think most citizens, who I, like I said, we talked earlier, are complaining about our, you know, what were the problems we have, either not having service or slow service. Right. If I'm a businessman or an individual, I'm saying, hey, that sounds pretty cool to me. Verizon's got a new, uh, it's a new device out. It's really cool. It's a, it's an antenna. It's kind of what I just described, right, the white okay. space. It all goes right. on your house. You can hook up all kinds of stuff to it. It travels with you. So you can take your home phone. And I live off of Bennett Point Road, right. and they have to test it by a signal. Well, right. I told the gentleman yesterday, I went to sign up for this new program because I have DSL sure. uh, through Atlantic Broadband. And I'd love to have just one package. Sure. They came out and said, I can't have it. You and can't I, have I can't have it wrong. You I'm don't located. have enough towers, you don't have enough signal. I'm thinking to myself, and I explained to the guy, he goes, Where do you live? I said, Well, I live in one of the most populated areas of Queen Anne's County. I live a mile and a half, I'm sorry, three and a half miles off of Route 50 in Graysonville, which is next to Kent. It's a population. Sure it and I said, So if you're telling me that your system you're trying to sell now, doesn't reach me. How in the world is it going to be Southersville, Crumpton, some Prom of our other places in the county? Well, it's again, not fair. It's not fair. So that's okay. why I'm doing this. That's great. Now look, let's end <coughs> up with this. You promised during the campaign, and you're doing a great job uh, by being on this show and other and having public meetings and stuff like that. Open government, and you're pushing for me, Robert Bucky. I'm going to talk to you about issues, and I'm going to get out in front of you and make sure you know what we're talking about, why we're talking about. Just keep talking about your efforts with that. I mean, appearing on this show, open meetings it's, coming it's, up. Fred, uh, thanks for asking. I, yeah. I ran on transparency, as you know, and I think transparency is important. Everybody has the right to know where their tax dollars are sure. being sent, spent. And I'm sitting here right now being paid as a county commissioner. So when I walk out this door, I have several meetings today. Transparency is important. And I will do and continue to do and to ensure that the county commissioners are transparent. 
it's not about me, as you know. I don't like to use the word I, and I try to always use There's the word we. There's five of you we. working There's together. There's five of us doing this together. It may take three votes, but I always want us to be in unison together. And transparency is so important in government. It is extremely important. So coming on this show and, and, and having all the commissioners do this, uh, having town, I encourage all the commissioners to have town halls, to come on to the show on a weekly basis. We had basis. 70 people show up on a five degree night. That's on pretty a, impressive. 42 there. emails. Yeah. That's and, nice. and, you know, it, transparency is just too important today to reach out to people. I think everyone has a right to know what's going on in their county, whether it be I'm having a meeting with this individual, or I was at the Upper Regional Shore Council yesterday talking about Verizon and, sure. and um, broadband access for the county. That's transparency to me. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And you know, you're off to a great start. I think all five of you are off to a great start. I do too. And as a citizen, I know QAC TV7 is delighted to get the message out so you get to hear what the citizens are saying. Uh, l let me tell you, one Please. thing we all talked about as county commissioners, and we ran on this. Now, this is nothing against the past, but sure. there have been some past set of commissioners that I, we felt have been disrespectful to the public. And you know where I mean by that, sure. with the cussing and the, 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 the joking, the laughing. It's just the meetings weren't any fun to watch, were they? They were very unprofessional. Yeah. And one of the things we've talked about is to be, when that camera's rolling, to be professional. Good. Let me tell you, we're not all happy campers when we're in private, you know, because obviously well, that's we where have, you fight the battle. That's right. That's right. We have passions about things. But when that camera comes on, and, one, and, and let me tell you who does this. Jim Moran. He's doing a great job. As Jim President Moran right insists that, and when we're in that meeting, it's it's good manners. It's good manners. I'm gonna tell you Act that like it's the honest truth. I mean, yeah. me and Mark Anderson were, had a passion about something the last meeting, and the cameras got ready to flip on, and Jim Moran was like, "Hey, hey, you know." So he's, you know, he's running a tight ship. He's running a tight ship, which is good. Well, Robert, thank you for being on Commissioner's thank Corner you. again. We appreciate. I know the citizens appreciate it, and I want everyone to know Robert's made a commitment. He'll get here as often as he can. And he's going to try to do it every week. Once a week. Once a week, and get the information out to you again, Robert. Thank you thank very you. much. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching QAC TV Seven, and you've been watching Commissioner's Corner. We'll see you every week. My time is up. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.